I'm Chris Evans, Acting Administrator for the Drug Enforcement Administration. Thank you for joining us. Every year, DEA honors our fallen members through memorial service for those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. As a longtime DEA agent, I have attended this annual service countless times, and like many of you, I personally know some of the brave men and women whose names are engraved not only on the DEA Wall of Honor here at headquarters, but also in our hearts. This is always a difficult day, and my heart is with the families, friends, and colleagues of those heroes. In past years, many of us have attended the memorial service in person. Unfortunately, this year, like last year, the COVID-19 pandemic is forcing us to gather virtually. Please know that plans are underway to hold an in-person memorial service for the DEA family, including our memorial families in mid-October, when we formally dedicate our new wall of honor, which we will preview for you in a moment. As I stand here today, I'm relieved to tell you that we do not have any additional names to add to the wall of honor this year. Thankfully, we did not lose anyone in the line of duty in 2020. For the 85 individuals on the wall of honor to say we reaffirm to them and their families to you that they will always hold a special place in our hearts. I'm glad you're joining us for today's ceremony, which reflects the lasting gratitude we have for our fallen members, for they gave their lives to meet our mission to disrupt, dismantle, and destroy drug trafficking organizations that threaten the health and safety of the American people. We will continue to fight for their cause because it's our cause too. They made the ultimate sacrifice for the American people and they are never to be forgotten. And when I think about those heroes on our wall of honor, I can't help but think of three words, duty, honor, country. It was General Douglas MacArthur who uttered those words almost 60 years ago this week when he spoke to a group of young soldiers. Duty, honor, country, he said. Those three hallowed words reverently dictate what you ought to be, what you can be, and what you will be. They're your rallying points to build courage when courage seems to fail, to regain faith when there seems to be little cause for faith, and to create hope when hope becomes forlorn. And even though General McCarthy was speaking to soldiers who have fallen on the battlefield in war, his words ring true for us today as we fight for a better life for Americans, free from the ravages of drugs and the violence that comes with it. With our remembrance of those individuals, we must also take a moment to focus on the family members who have lost a loved one. For it's our duty to remember the daily sacrifices they have given for this country and to make sure we support, honor, and acknowledge them as well. The dignity and grace that they exhibit is a beacon of light as we remember our fallen DEA brothers and sisters. And so I hope you will think of those three words when you see the faces of those brave men and women, great Americans who have come from every walk of life to join our family. Men and women of courage, conviction, and hope. Heroes who served in DEA's domestic and international offices all around the world. God bless the men and women of the DEA, and God bless America. Sean Fern from DEA's Congressional Public Affairs Office will now provide us with a preview of the new Wall of Honor. Sean. Thank you, Mr. Evans. For decades, DEA has maintained a Wall of Honor at our headquarters, first at our 14th and I Street location in Washington, D.C., and now for many years here in Arlington, Virginia. The DEA Wall of Honor has taken a number of different forms over the years. While our Wall of Honor has always been a way to ensure those on it will never be forgotten, the renovation of DEA headquarters gave us an opportunity to ensure its presence was front and center in the main entry. To that end, we commissioned a designer who worked with the museum staff and input from our cherished memorial families to make an even more beautiful tribute to our fallen heroes. While the Wall of Honor has taken on a new look with enhanced features, what has not changed is what the Wall of Honor means. The DEA Wall of Honor is about our people, all of the fallen are people, not statistics. They gave their lives in the line of duty for DEA, for America, and for the world. Representing them each as individuals, husbands and wives, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, rather than anonymously like some memorials do. The DEA Wall of Honor gives focus as we show their faces, tell their stories, and honor them, their work, and their ultimate sacrifice. The updated portrait illustrations and biographies 
provide a more comprehensive presentation, providing a representation of each individual that is timeless. They are equal, regardless of color, race, gender, service time, service date, they are memorialized here together. The feeling of the DEA Wall of Honor is respectful, serene, contemporary, even timeless. There's an appropriate sense of scale with its space and aesthetics and using the setting inside DEA headquarters. DEA wanted this to be our monument to the fallen and not just look like other memorials. So to the question of design, how to make all equal, how to tell the stories. The portraits were done with a commissioned illustration based on their official photograph. The now consistent format for each image gives a unified, respectful, beautiful, and serene way to present each person. The new wall of honor features two screens. The larger screen above shows each individual and rotates through them over a period of time. The lower monitor allows the visitor to approach and learn about each person, navigating via touchscreen, either by date or by last name. Each biography for our fallen heroes can be read on the screen or heard via an audio recording. The new DEA Wall of Honor features a memorial plaque for each individual that's been lost in the line of duty. The order begins in the bottom left corner and moves up and to the right, traveling in date order in a staggered pattern. While the focus on the DEA Wall of Honor is on the individual, if you step back and take in a view of the wall from a distance, you notice that the backdrop forms the stylized waving stripes of our American flag. The stars are fallen heroes. It is a sign of unity and a symbol that the women and men who are here on the DEA Wall of Honor were working in service to America. DEA is an American institution. The DEA Wall of Honor is internally illuminated 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It stands as a fitting tribute for our DEA employees, for visitors, and for the public walking by on the sidewalk outside, even at night. This wall of honor was truly a team effort. Museum designers and architects took aesthetic design cues from the architecture of the building and the lobby. Strong metal, brass tones, golden presence coordinate with the features of the larger building. Placed in a large niche in a very high profile location here at headquarters, the wall of honor is curved to reach out, wrap around, envelop the visitor, even evoking the wings of an angel. While placed in a high profile and high traffic location, the wall is a centering place and allows you to focus. Above, you will note a ring of shiny brass serving to help center your experience. It reminds us of a halo. Finally, this new DEA Wall of Honor and the work to renovate and update the DEA Museum were thought of as perhaps two separate projects. However, over the past couple of years, we've endeavored to connect the two, first by presenting the Wall of Honor connected through a Hall of Honor to the DEA Museum. And through these, we honor the work, we honor the people, and we honor the values. Drug law enforcement is about people, good people working hard to protect the American people. And so we pause to remember each of our fallen heroes, never to be forgotten. Agent Stafford E. Beckett, March 21st, 1921. Agent Charles Archie Wood, March 21st, 1921. Agent Joseph W. Floyd, May 17th, 1922. Agent Bert S. Gregory, October 25th, 1922. Agent James T. Williams, October 16th, 1924. Agent Lewis L. Marks, October 24th, 1924. 
Agent James E. Brown, June 7, 1928. Agent James R. Kerrigan, December 27, 1928. Agent John W. Crozier, November 16, 1934. Agent Spencer Stafford, February 7, 1935. Agent Andrew P. Sanderson, September 23, 1944. Agent Anchor M. Bangs, September 24, 1950. Agent Wilson M. Shaw, December 12, 1957. Agent Mansell R. Burrell, December 19, 1967. Special Agent Hector Jordan, October 14, 1970. Police Officer Jean A. Clifton, November 19, 1971. Special Agent Frank Timillo, October 12, 1972. Special Agent George F. White, March 25, 1973. Special Agent Richard Heath, Jr., April 1, 1973. Special Agent Amir Benitez, August 9, 1973. Detective Gerald Sawyer, November 6th, 1973. Investigator Leslie S. Grosso, May 21st, 1974. Special Agent Nicholas Fragos, August 5th, 1974. Secretary Mary M. Keehan, August 5th, 1974. Special Agent Charles H. Mann, August 5th, 1974. Secretary Anna Y. Munger, August 5th, 1974. Fiscal Assistant Anna J. Pope, August 5th, 1974. Supervisory Clerk Typist, Martha D. Skeels, August 5, 1974. Clerk Typist Mary P. Sullivan, August 5, 1974. Special Agent Larry D. Wallace, December 19, 1975. Special Agent James T. Lunn, May 14, 1976. Special Agent Ralph N. Shaw, May 14, 1976. Special Agent Octavio Gonzalez, December 13, 1976. Special Agent Francis J. Miller, March 5, 1977. Special Agent Robert C. Lightfoot, November 23, 1977. Special Agent Thomas J. Devine, September 25, 1982. Special Agent Larry N. Carwell, January 9, 1984. Detective Marcellus Ward, December 3rd, 1984. Special Agent Enrique S. Camarena, March 5th, 1985. Deputy Sheriff James A. Avant, July 24th, 1986. Criminal Investigator Charles M. Bassing, July 24th, 1986. Criminal Investigator Kevin L. Broche, 
July 24th, 1986. Office Assistant Susan M. Heffler, August 16th, 1986. Special Agent William Ramos, December 31st, 1986. Special Agent Raymond J. Stasny, January 26th, 1987. Special Agent Arthur L. Cash, August 25th, 1987. Detective Terry W. McNett, February 2nd, 1988. Special Agent George M. Montoya, February 5th, 1988. Special Agent Paul S. Sima, February 6th, 1988. Special Agent Everett E. Hatcher, February 28th, 1989. Special Agent Ricky C. Finley, May 20th, 1989. Investigator Joseph T. Aversa, March 5th, 1990. Investigator Wally Howard Jr., October 30th, 1990. Special Agent Eugene T. McCarthy, February 2nd, 1991. Special Agent Alan H. Wynn, August 13th, 1991. Special Agent George Douglas Althaus, May 28th, 1992. Special Agent Becky L. Dwojeski, October 21st, 1993. Detective Stephen J. Streel, November 19th, 1993. Special Agent Richard E. Foss, June 30th, 1994. Special Agent Frank Fernandez, Jr., August 27th, 1994. Special Agent J. W. Seal, August 27th, 1994. Special Agent Meredith Thompson, August 27th, 1994. Special Agent Juan C. Vars, August 27th, 1994. Special Agent Frank S. Wallace, Jr., August 27th, 1994. Legal Technician Shelley D. Bland, April 19th, 1995. Dispatcher Rona L. Chafee, April 19th, 1995. Office Assistant Carol J. Fields, April 19th, 1995. Legal Technician Carrie A. Lenz, April 19th, 1995. Special Agent Kenneth G. McCullough, April 19th, 1995. Special Agent Sean E. Curl, December 12th, 1997. Pilot Instructor Larry Stylin, September 25th, 1998. Special Agent Royce D. Trammell, August 28th, 2000. Diversion Investigator Alice Fay Hall Walton, March 1st, 2001. Telecommunications Specialist Elton Lee Armstead, March 18th, 2003. Special Agent Terrence Loftus, May 28th, 2004. Special Agent Donald C. Ware, October 12th, 
2004. Narcotics Bureau Special Agent J. Balchunas, November 5, 2004. Special Agent Thomas J. Byrne, August 30, 2008. FBI Special Agent Samuel S. Hicks, November 19, 2008. Special Agent Forrest Lehman, October 26, 2009. Special Agent Chad Michael, October 26, 2009. Special Agent Michael Weston, October 26, 2009. Special Agent James Terry Watson, June 21, 2013. Detective Brent L. Hanger, August 6, 2015. Detective George Del Rio, November 7, 2019.